It's time for an inside look at the most powerful motorsport on the planet. WFO Radio, NHRA Nitro. It's the most exciting sport on earth as far as I'm concerned. Take a walk through the Nitro pits as we go one-on-one with the stars of drag racing. Hey, you're with Matt Hagen. This is Ron Caps, Matt Hagen's personal friend here on WFO. Featuring the NHRA's Alan Reinhardt. Our events are truly an experience. They're not just a spectator event. They are an experience. So get in, sit down, and hold on with host Joe Costello as he goes WFO. Thanks, brother. Always love being on WFO, baby. Nobody brings it to you better than you, brother. Now crank it up. It's time to go WFO. Here's your host, Joe Costello. What's up, NHRA fans? Welcome back to WFO Radio NHRA Nitro Podcast. I'm Joe Costello, and the countdown begins. Hopefully you are all fired up. For the NHRA playoffs, they are upon us. This is it. Everything that has happened prior to this, not just in drag racing, but in world history, none of it matters compared to what we are about to witness. Six races to glory. Every driver, every team, every sponsor, every crew member focused on their best possible performance over the next six races. The points have been reset. Everybody is fired up and intent on giving their all. And we will find out this weekend at the Mopar Express Lane, NHRA Nationals in Reading, Pennsylvania. Hashtag Reading Nats. It is going to be great. I'm looking forward to getting up there. And we have got a great series of interviews to preview the event coming up on this show. You're going to hear Doug Coletta, Chevrolet Performance U.S. Nationals winner. Doug wins his first Indy. What does he have to say in his WFO interview? That will be coming down the pike. Tommy Johnson Jr. going to preview the countdown. TJ, great season. TJ, previewing the countdown on WFO Radio. Ty Tharp. Mickey Thompson, Top Fuel, Harley-Davidson, champion, back-to-back seasons. We're going to speak with Ty about winning the title. Once again, what does it all mean? The first champion of 2019, Matt Smith, Pro Stock Motorcycle Racer. Matt is going to try to go back-to-back in terms of championship himself, and he's got to go through Andrew Hines and Jerry Savoie and Eddie Krawick. What are Matt Smith's plans How's he going to handle it? What about Angie? All that coming up this week on WFO Radio and HRA Nitro. And finally, a great story. Call him a spoiler, if you will. Aaron Stanfield diving back into pro stock this weekend with who? How? What's the story? Stick around. You will find out on this show. Right now, though, the sponsors, the people who make it all possible. I'm talking about Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School and the Dragster Adventure, where you can drive a dragster. Did you know that? You just show up with nothing except your clothes, and they provide you with everything, and you can go run 130 miles per hour in the quarter mile, 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds or 3 seconds, maybe even race each other. Go to frankhawley.com. This is the best gift of the holiday season. You can get a gift certificate, and then whoever gets it gets to work it out. They travel all around the country. Go to frankhawley.com to find out more. Samtech.edu, the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. Start your education at full speed. Block, head, CNC programs, motorsport, EFI, tuning. They've got an Associate of Applied Science degree. Go to Samtech.edu. Call Brian Massengill. Tell him you heard it on WFO Radio. And they can place you once you go through the school, which is the big, big deal. Total Seal Piston Rings. TotalSeal.com, the leader in ring seal technology. Check out the website. Not only do they do piston rings, for any application, they can custom make piston rings for any application, but also they have the tools to maintain them. A few engine builders out there, grinders, etc. Go to TotalSeal.com. MagicDryUS.com, the official organic absorbent of the NHRA. Not only does it work better, and it's better for the environment, but it is also lighter to travel. There's a million reasons why Magic Dry US is the official organic absorbent of the NHRA.com. Go to MagicDryUS.com. Com. Rodax, coffeeandgrills.com, hot sauces and spice rubs, but a pound of coffee roasted fresh per your order, a blend that is drag racing themed, caffeinated, all of these things make Rodax, coffeeandgrills.com an amazing, amazing thing and also a great option for the holidays. That's what I do. I get everybody a pound of coffee, a bottle of hot sauce and some spice rub and it usually lasts them well into the following year and they love me for it. At least that's what they tell me. 
Hanks defers metalworking, lubricants, hussyperformance.net, drag racing edge, and EV3 drag racing. Everybody supporting WFO Radio, and we greatly appreciate it. All right. Joining us now, he'll be calling the action as the NHRA begins its 2019 countdown. Alan Reinhardt joins us now. Alan, welcome back. Hey, Joe. Good to be back. So you are, like, starting off a group of interviews now for, like, the third consecutive week, and I am starting to like it. I am really liking the way it's all working out, and uh, I think the listeners like it as well. Everybody is excited about it, and you were busy this past weekend, and we got the countdown, so there's a lot to delve into. What do you, What happened up in Epping? Let's start there. Actually, we had a really good – wasn't overly kind to us. Uh, actually, it shortened our day a little bit on Saturday, which is a shame because they had – Pretty good, uh, pretty good gathering of fans, and they had jet cars, and we were planning on running alcohol cars in the evening, and that ended up getting pushed back. So, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't get to put on the show for the fans, and I hate that. But we had a we had a heck of a race yesterday, got it all wrapped up, and now I'm uh, headed to Reading. That is awesome. So uh, I know Dan Pomponio was able to win in Top Alcohol Funny Car. Yeah, he had a really good car. We, there, there was a strong field, though. Uh, you know, he ended up being the number one qualifier. But I think five of the seven cars that were there were all qualified at the 550s, and they, they put on a great show. We had a great dragster race as well. Well, who won the dragster race? Josh Hart actually did, and uh, just like Funny Car, we had a great field of dragsters. I think six of the eight dragsters that were qualified qualified at the 20s. We had 10 cars that were there trying to qualify, so... Uh, you know, again, it was a it was a good show, and it was a wide open affair. Very exciting stuff up there in Epping, New Hampshire. Some of the nicest people that I've encountered in my uh, NHRA related travels. And I know there was racing all around the country, but Alan, here we go. The NHRA countdown is upon us, and I always like to think, you know, we call it the countdown, but it's the playoffs, right? That's what we're striving to achieve is that playoff atmosphere where everybody is, like, nervous about their team and will they make it and will they get a good start. And I think getting a good start is very important, not mandatory, but very important if you're going to win this thing. Well, I think if you're if you're not in the top five, then you have to get – a really good start. I think if you're in the top five, then, you know, you've got a little bit of breathing room going in. I also think with the six race deal, I think you've got one mulligan, but I don't think you have more than that. You know, if you go out there and go out first round, uh, the next two races, then you're really digging yourself a hole. It's going to be tough to, to dig out of. Exactly. You'd have to win like four in a row and get help or something, depending on what your competition competition does. But if your competition wins all six races, though, there's nothing you're going to do. We learned that last year. Yep, that's a fact, and uh, you know I think that I'm sure that's what uh, what Torrance's plan is again this year. But um, I, I don't think it's I don't think anybody's going to do that. I don't think anybody's really going to dominate. Steve Certain has got a great car. Uh, Billy is going to have a good car now that he says he's committed to doing that. But uh, you know Leah's back in in race winning form again, and there's just there's too many good cars out there. I just don't see uh, I don't see anybody making a run like uh, like Steve. Ever, I see it last week. ever again, my opinion. I, I still don't think it uh, It should have happened once, given the competition that we've seen, but that's what makes the 2018 championship of Steve Torrance so historic and amazing. Um, you know, let's let's stay in, in top fuel a little bit and just uh, dabble in the Torrance family bookending the points. You got Steve as number one. You got Billy as number 10, both with championship aspirations. We've seen uh, that, you know, Billy is probably the best, most reliable guy to go out there and beat Steve on a pretty regular basis because we know he doesn't really care about, uh, you know, when he goes out to win, he goes out to win, and he's not going to do any funny business. And that makes me a little, you know, nervous for them. If they run into the, if they have a bad qualifying effort, they run into their own car early on, they could self inflict a wound. That could certainly happen, but uh, I think the odds of that are, are pretty long. You know, they haven't they haven't had a whole lot of bad qualifying efforts either. You know, do they end up racing each other in the semis? That's very possible, but I just don't see them facing off first round. Other cars in the top 10. You already mentioned Leah. Uh, certainly we see Antron coming around. They're coming around. Doug Coletta just won their race. But who who do you think has put together a program? Like, we're going to see everybody at their supposed best right now. Whereas, even in Indy, there were some people saying, oh, we're still working on some stuff, and, you know, we're not really totally focused. Now you've got to be totally focused. This is it. If you fall behind, you you can lose. So... Of the contenders for Steve, clearly he is the favorite by a lot, and we already mentioned Billy. Of the contenders, is there one or two that stand above the rest? 
Well, I think that Mike Salinas is going to have an excellent car. There's no question about that. Look at what Alan Johnson, Brian Houston have done in the playoffs over the years. Um, I think that the weak part of that team is Mike himself, and he'll tell you. You know, he needs to get focused. He needs to get his reaction times in line, um, or or that could really come back to bite him. So I think that's certainly one to watch. Um, Doug Coletta, you mentioned, you know, his, his car's running pretty good right now. I really think uh, in the DSR camp, I think, you know, Leah is, is the one. I, Antron's car is, is okay, but those guys have been – it's been a long time since they've done it, and if, if, if they want to prove to me that they're counting the contenders, they need to show me that they can win. Um, so, I, you know, that's pretty much where – I think that's where most of, uh, of the conversation come from for Steve. No, makes sense, makes sense, and we'll find out this weekend. The uh, Mopar Express Nationals out there, Reading, Pennsylvania. Hopefully everybody is coming out, got your DVR set, and understand that this is the playoffs. You cannot miss a race. In Funny Car, uh, you know, we're going to hear from Tommy Johnson Jr. this week, and just like looking at that group, Robert is Robert, right? He's got Jimmy Proc, Chris Cunningham. I fully expect them to go out there and get after it. Robert told us uh, before Indy that, he, you know, he needs to win – Three more races if he's going to give himself a shot. So they're setting the bar high. And uh, John Forrest last week in an interview, he felt he says he feels really great and confident. Uh, you know, anything is possible. That I'm having all been said, you got Tommy Johnson Jr. has cooled off a little bit as of late. Beckman surging but without a win. Caps, Caps and Tobler or Caps and Tobler. Who knows what they're going to do, but they're capable. Um, who are the Who is the biggest rival for the top of the points lead? Who do you think can jump up there and mix it up? I said it last week, and I'm going to stand by what I said last week. I think John Force now has confidence that Brian Karate can give him a winning car if he does what Brian tells him to do, and I think that's a scary combination. You know, you look at what Brian has done as far as championship runs. When he was with Antron, um, you know, he's got a good combination. He's got a good car. John's had a really good car all year, but if you go back into the archives, how many times have we said, you know, geez, John, I think, made a mistake, or John did something that I think penalized his team, but I believe that John now has enough confidence in Brian to do what Brian tells him, and that car scares me. I really believe that uh, I really believe that they can win basically any time they come out. Wow. Well, um, just let's take a second, folks, to this, this simmer on that a little bit. If John Force could go out there and beat this field of funny car teams, uh, maybe the you know the most competitive field that we've ever seen. If you look at it in terms of points and who can win on any given weekend, to win a seventeenth championship like that, we don't have the media machine to publicize a story that amazing. Um, I think if it happens, it, it, I think it'll it'll get very well publicized simply because uh, you know John, what he's done, his age, of course, is a factor. So I think that uh, that you know that's that's going to come into play. But I really think, I just really think he can. You know, John said something in, in Indy that kind of sparked up the Internet, um, and I didn't, I didn't catch exactly what it was, but something to the effect of, you know, he and Brian, um, you know, hadn't been getting along or something like that. And, I mean, what he was talking about was Brian telling him, John, this is what you need to do. And John being, you know, hey, I've been winning races like this for, for 30 years. I'm going to do it my way. And now I think they're on the same page. So those two guys are going to be very good, very strong. I don't think there's uh, I don't think there's any question about it. And I apologize for my GPS chirping in the background if it's picking it up, but now, uh, I'm on the road. And to the audience out there, don't go to where Reinhardt's going to be because by the time you get there, he won't be there anymore. So just don't worry about that. Very interesting. I got my eyes on. I, I totally agree, and I think that's a great pre-countdown storyline. That's what we're supposed to be doing, creating the storylines. And the idea that John Force could go out there and, you know, get up on the horse one more time and ride to a 17th championship, like, that's uh, that's amazing and insanity and great and good for drag racing all at the same time at 70 years old. Make the right, Reinhardt. Make the right. Tommy Johnson Jr., Jack Beckman, Ron Caps, Matt Hagen, right in the middle of the points. It's going to be interesting to see how they fare. Uh, they are the toughest competition each other sees as well, so maybe they take round wins from each other as well as uh, going through. And Coletta Motorsports, they uh, they don't turn it on until this time of the year, so I'll be interested to see how they fare. Yeah, and I think that uh, I think J.R. Todd is, is certainly one to watch because, remember, that team has won – a couple of championships in the last couple of years, one with Dell driving and, and of course, last year with JR. They know 
Uh, they know how to win. I think they've probably been doing a little experimenting, but they always seem to come to life in the playoffs. So if Jr. If Jr. can make a move in the next two races, then I think that uh, I think he throws his hat right back in the ring. But if he has two early exits, I think he's going to find himself too far behind. But I'm keeping an eye on that car. It's just too good. Super exciting. Pro Stock, Bo Butner, Alex Laughlin, Jason Line, the top three. NHRA just announced the 2020 Pro Stock schedule. I'm going to dive into that. I really believe that it's good policy to get all, like, announcements and stuff like this, the pro stock schedule. Like, let's get it out of the way before we start the countdown because uh, it's there's going to be a lot to talk about in the countdown, or there should be, and uh, interesting. Are you ready for the pro stock schedule? Are you up on this? Do you know? Just drive. I actually have not seen it yet. I uh, was at the racetrack all day and have been driving all day today, so uh, I haven't seen it yet. Go ahead, hit me. It just dropped. This is it, and this is official because this is the 50th anniversary of pro stock. Starts off. Pomona starts off Pomona, goes to Phoenix, goes to Gainesville. So the first three races, Pro Stock will be on the tour. Then Vegas, then Houston, then Atlanta, then Topeka, then Bristol, then Norwalk. That's the front half of the season. So back to Bristol, back to Atlanta, back to Houston. So a little alternating going on between tracks. That's kind of cool. We're not going to Charlotte. I get it. Back half of the season. Uh, Sonoma. So, you know, no Chicago. Um, Seattle. Epping. No Brainerd. Remember, Epping is in a new position this year, right before Indianapolis. It goes uh, Se- uh, goes uh, Seattle, Brainerd, Epping, which is, you know, tough travel, but it is what it is. Then Indianapolis, of course. And then uh, Redding, Charlotte, Dallas, Vegas, Pomona. And I'm looking at that, and that leaves, you know, five countdown races. And so with the other schedule, they must have moved Indy into the countdown, which I'm a little off on that because I haven't seen the regular schedule in a little while. But there you go, Alan. Well, I like the fact that they're moving it around. I know, um, you know, Houston in particular is is a big – they've got a big pro stock fan base down there. And even though they brought in the Mountain Motor Cars and had some other stuff on track, they were missed. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I like the fact that they got it out early enough so that, you know, fans can start planning If I know that, uh, you know, I talked to a number of fans that said, you know, Hey, look, pro stock is one of the things that I come to watch and they are not going to make their travel plans until they know whether or not pro stock is going to be something that they're going to get to see. So, you know, fans now can start putting together their travel schedules and their calendars for next year. Um, I'm, I'm glad that they're moving them around because I think, uh, I, th- I just think you need to do that. You know, you you get into other sports, particularly football. You know, you've got home games, you've got away games. You know when your rival teams are coming to town, and you know that sometimes uh, the team you want to see isn't going to be coming to town this year, but they are going to be coming next year, so you can plan for that. Uh, I'd like to sit down and kind of study it a little bit more, but uh, it's, it sounds good at first glance. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I just want to correct something that I maybe misled or misspoke. Uh, it appears, and we're, you know, we're doing this like the news has just come off the, the desk, right? This is hot off the presses, and we are digesting it. But it appears, Alan, that Pro Stock will have a five-race countdown. Interesting. Well, that'll certainly put uh, that'll certainly put more pressure on them when they do get into the countdown to the championship because, you know, one mulligan out of six races is one thing. One mulligan out of five races is a whole different thing. Absolutely. And so we will double back on this uh, breaking news over the course of the week and, of course, this weekend out there in Reading. Now, pro stock in terms of, you know, who's uh, leading the points. We spoke with Alex Laughlin last week. Alex was very uh, bummed out. You know, he was happy he won the race. Don't get me wrong. But the way he won it bummed him out. And I loved that because that's real and probably the way he should feel. Like, right, oh, man, I missed it. I got got a break. Uh, that's not how I want to win. I want to go out there and dominate. And that's basically what he said. He's got a good car and a good opportunity. But a lot of guys do. And if I'm looking at a dark horse, I'm wondering, you know, a guy like Derek Kramer, they are, they're quick. They got good power. They got a really strong crew chief. And Derek is the kind of guy who can go on a run on the tree. We know he's capable. Uh, it's just got to it's just got to happen. Right. Jed Coughlin sitting down there in eighth. Um, amazing, amazing competition in pro stock. Yeah. If there's one that's going to be really difficult to, to handicap, I think that's it. Um, I, you know, Erica. Erica, I think, is really pissed off and she's got a really good car. And that's a scary combination for anybody else in pro stock, because I think she feels like she's got something to prove. Uh, Greg Anderson looks like he's got a good car again. Jason looks like he's had the best car for the last couple of three weeks. 
Um, you know, Bo cooled off a little bit, but, uh, you know, he's still got KB power and still certainly capable of winning races. Call me, call me back on pro stock. And after we get to, uh, after we get to the other side of St. Louis, I think we'll have a whole lot clearer picture. Oh, absolutely. And it's uh, very interesting. And a name that is on the entry list that is very exciting to me. And, uh, you know, I, I had heard that this is going down and maybe for the entire countdown, Aaron Stanfield back out there in pro stock. And that is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, his name on the entry list. The details will be forthcoming. It says Janik Brothers Racing is the um, name that the entry falls under. Aaron came out, won his first round ever against Jed Coughlin at the U.S. Nationals, had some great success. You know as well as I do, the kid is a practical savant when it comes to driving, whether it be a top dragster or super stock or otherwise. He can find the winner's circle, not to mention his tuning prowess in Samtech Factory Stock Showdown, but... I'm excited to see what Aaron Stanfield can do, and who knows? This dude might get a race win. He very well could. Um, you know, you you said it. He's certainly uh, he's certainly got the driving gene from his old man, and you know he's he knows his way around the mechanical side of the race car too. And I think that I think that can only help him. So um, you know, hey, I'll take all the good cars I can get, and if that's just going to be one more headache for the countdown contenders to have to deal with. Absolutely, because the kid can leave. It's just uh, he's been out of the car in a while. You know, sometimes that's actually a, a good thing. But Erica, Greg, Bo, Jason are all going to be in the mix. It's going to be very exciting. And, and of course, Pro Stock Motorcycle, um, you know, thinking about Matt Smith and what he did last year, it's going to be a tough task. But then talking to Jerry Savoie last week, and that interview was in the archive, Jerry sounded super confident. Now, I don't expect anybody to be like, oh, woe is me. We don't have a chance, Joe. Come on. It was a lucky win in Indy, but he sounded real confident. And he was uh, lamenting the fact that Andrew Redlett, because he wanted to show the performance advantage that they had in the final round. Anybody that was paying any attention at all in Indy saw the performance advantage they had. Uh, what I want to see is if they still have it. You know, we've seen people come out once, you know, now and again, that just have a great race for whatever reason. Um, but you've got to be able to do it more than once in a row. They absolutely had the best motorcycle on the grounds at Indianapolis, and it's been a long time since you've been able to say that about a Suzuki, for one, uh, a non-Harley for another. And if they can keep, if he can come out to Reading and have that performance again, then I think all of a sudden he is a legitimate contender um, to, to derail the Andrew train who's just been crushing everybody all year. And this year, maybe more than ever, you know, the countdown format is being put to the test. I want your opinion on this because, uh, you know, for years I have been supporting, continue to support and support uh, because of what we have seen, you know, forever in the evolution of regular sports. You know, it, we don't take the best record in the American League and the best record in the National League and have them play in the World Series. We don't do that. We have a playoff system, and you lose what you gained. And even if you were perfect or you won 110 games, you still got to go through this, uh, you know, trial by fire that is the playoffs. For our entertainment, by the way. I mean, it's it's entertainment to have to see the best of the best all be together at the same time at their best. But this year, though, Alan, boy... It's tough to make the argument, right? With with Torrance over a 600-point lead, Drew just totally d dominant and deserving. We've seen it maybe more than ever, lopsided regular seasons. Do you think that is because of the you know pure dominance? Do you think it's because others have been working on their own project, preparing for the countdown in a different way? Uh, that remains to be seen, probably. But um, you know, give me your thoughts on the countdown here and how it has aged, especially given the dominance we've seen. Well, I think Torrance is it's a pretty simple explanation. You know, look what he did last year uh, to close out the season, and he came back this year, even though it took him a couple of races to get into the winter circle. Um, you know, they haven't changed anything. They've, they're doing exactly the same thing this year they did last year, which is just crushing people. Um, I think, you know, Andrew Hines came out this year with a big chip on his shoulder after having not won a race last year time in his career. He went a season without having, without picking up a trophy. And I think he had a chip on his shoulder. Um, you know, Robert Height and the team, they've, they've done this before where they get on a hot streak and just go start piling up points. And I think Bo is the biggest surprise, but pro stock, I think also is, you know, obviously the closest in points going into the countdown, the reset for pro stock actually gave Bo a bigger lead than he had. Yeah, actually that's true. His league got gobbled up 
and Alex Lawson was like two or three behind going into the uh, the reset and gained a, he gained a round of racing. That's kind of interesting. Um, I still support it. I get it. I also understand why some people, uh, you know, like the old way of doing it. But look at it this way. And the old way of doing it, we wouldn't be talking about very much right now. That's true. And, you know, things change and things evolve. And since the, the teams are all, you know, they know now what you've got to do. They understand the format. But you look at, you know, you look at the, the lead that Steve has and look at the fact that, you know, Mike Salinas sat out a couple of races. Without the countdown, he wouldn't have been able to do that. So would that mean Steve's lead is not as big or maybe Steve didn't win an extra race? Who knows? But guys now understand what you have to do to win in the countdown to the championship, and therefore that's the, what, the way their strategy is built, that this is what it's going to take to win in the countdown. And so the regular season, um, it just I don't think it's as much of a barometer as it used to be. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, we we will live it, and it's going to be up and down and just some things to recall from a year ago. You know, Caps uh, was involved, and it got a little injured, got a little nicked on the top end of the racetrack by a tow vehicle. Robert exploded and and had his, uh, you know, the body fly off. Like, just craziness happens in the countdown and the battle that it is, and you feel the intensity, and, and that's why I have come to love it. Yeah, I, I have as well. You know, you know that this is the time that you've got to be shine, that you've got to shine. And you know that, you know, if you've been holding everything back, uh, now's the time to turn it loose. So it, it makes it very exciting for my job. And it certainly seems to make it exciting for the fans as well. So true. So true. Alan on his way to Reading as we speak, the Mopar Express Lane Nationals out there in Reading. And uh, I understand there's a big block party and it is on what Thursday night. And it is, uh, give us the details, and are they going to let you be a part of this home run derby? That's what I heard. I don't know. You know, I uh, I had to ask about it, and the the answer I got was, well, we'll kind of see. Um, I You know, I, I played a lot of competitive softball when I was younger, and I think I can still hit one of those things. So uh, if they'll let me, uh, I'm looking forward to getting out there and taking a couple of hacks. If not, I'll just be the MC. But it's, uh, it's at First Energy Field in Reading. They have a home run derby with the Dodge players. They have live music. They have an uh, autograph session with all the Dodge drivers. Uh, the big car show. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, really a fun time, especially if the weather's nice. It's a great evening to get out, meet your favorite Mopar and Dodge drivers, and just come out and have a little fun before we kick off the weekend. All right. I want to get your hopes up, but I was hearing about this, and I was told in a way that made me think that you were in. So don't take that as gospel, but... That's what I heard. Well, if I'm in, then uh, like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I uh, I think I can still hit a softball a little bit. I'm not saying I'm going to win the tournament, but uh, I like to go out there and uh, take a couple of hacks anyway. Yeah. Instead of just making everybody else doing it, I'll give them a chance to make fun of me. Alan Reinhardt is lowering expectations, everybody. I am saying he's going to win the tournament. Because, number one, Alan, I know you used to play a lot. And number two, you got leverage, man. You're a very tall guy. You get hold one of those things, it's going to go, baby. So good luck in that. Well, I appreciate it. If I get into the uh, if I get into the contest, then uh, I'll give it my best, and I guess I'll just have to wait and see until I get some kind of official word. There it is. Yes, exactly. Don't listen to me. We'll, we'll have to see when it all happens. Alan, thank you very much. Great job. Safe travels. All right, Joe. Really do appreciate it, and uh, you set travel safe as well. I'll see you in Reading in a couple of days. There he goes, the voice of the NHRA, Alan Reinhardt, joins us each week right here on WFO Radio. Got a great list of guests for you this week. Be sure to subscribe, Apple Podcast, Spotify, go to WFORadio.com, however you want to do it. Very interesting, Doug Coletta, going to be the first to roll out, Tommy Johnson Jr., Matt Smith, Ty Tharp, Aaron Stanfield. That's big breaking news, by the way. Aaron Stanfield, we got him immediately. Going to talk about running pro stock this weekend in Reading and maybe more, you're going to have to wait for Aaron Stanfield. He's going to be running pro stock, everybody. You heard it on WFO. Who's going to be the team? It's going to be elite. I'll just tell you. It's going to be elite. Aaron Stanfield, partnered with some great people, going to make it all happen to go out there and mix it up in the countdown. Let's delve into the pro stock schedule a little bit deeper. It was absolute breaking news when we spoke with Alan. Right out. And it was a it was a cold read, but I've spent a little more time studying it. And, and here are my takes. OK, first of all, the 2020 NHRA schedule juxtaposed with the pro stock schedule. First up, the first five races of the year are going to have pro stock. 
Pomona, Arizona, Gainesville, Vegas four wide, and Houston. Pro stock returns to Houston, which means the NHRA is trying to bounce back and forth between tracks. If you didn't have it last year, you'll probably have it next year. That kind of deal. So pro stock returns to uh, Houston Raceway Park presented by Penzo. I wanted to get that right. ZMAX four wide, the NGK four wide, no pro stock. Southern Nationals, Atlanta, pro stock. Virginia, no pro stock. But Topeka, Bristol, both will have pro stock. So that just goes to show you. Norwalk, going to have pro stock. But then on the new extended Western Swing that begins in Chicago on July 9th, no pro stock. Dodge Mile High Nationals, no pro stock. Then pro stock rejoins the tour out there in Sonoma and the Northwest Nationals. Two races out west. Brainerd, no pro stock. Now, again, I've already seen people panicking, and it's surprising to me how few people paid attention this year. There were tracks that didn't have pro stock. There are people that are talking like they didn't even notice the schedule on Facebook. Like, how can they do this to pro stock? It's like, listen, this is the second year into this, guys. So no pro stock at Brainerd, which is a little upsetting, but they'll be back, I would imagine, in the future. What they're going to do is, I I'm, I can't say this for gospel, but based on what they did this year compared to what they're going to do next year, is they're going to shift the races around where Pro Stock goes to keep all their fans happy. Kind of like that Formula One analogy with the German Grand Prix between Nürburgring and Hockenheimring, keeping both of those fan bases happy at those tracks. New England Dragway up in New England will have Pro Stock. And then this is the part that I'm a little sketchy about. U.S. Nationals Pro Stock. Maple Grove Pro Stock. Carolina Nationals Pro Stock. AAA Insurance Midwest Nationals. No Pro Stock. And the Pro Stockers will have a five-race countdown. Now, I, I've, I've thought about this. Spent a little time. And then the rest of the way, uh, Texas, Vegas, Pomona will all have Pro Stock. And so there is a... Deep dive into the pro stock schedule for 2020. And here's my thought. The My Time segment where I give you my opinions is going to be scattered throughout these new shows. This is what I would have preferred. I understand that there are reasonings that I don't understand or am unaware of. That's why it is so challenging making these schedules and all. But the schedule was cut from 24 races to 18 races to make it viable and possible for people to run the Pro Stock Championship schedule. And as much as I love seeing Pro Stock at all the races and miss them when they're gone, it is obviously making the class much more viable. You got Matt Hartford out there doing well. Bill Butner is back because of it. Aaron Stanfield diving in this weekend. You can hear from him on WFO. Things are changing because of the the, the diminished schedule. If diminished is such a terrible word. Reduced schedule. But, To have a five-race countdown, I am against that. I think that's uh, that needs to be remedied in the future. And here's the remedy. Ready? 19-race schedule. Why are we married to 18? The philosophy of cutting the schedule down is still adhered to. Instead of cutting six races, you cut five races, and then you run the final seven races of the year from Indy through the normal countdown with everybody else. And yes, pro stock, you do have to run one more race. 19 instead of 18. And it solves all the problems. Running a five-race countdown instead of a six-race countdown. Eh, I'm not into that. What's up with Pro Stock Motorcycle? Are they going to run a six-race countdown? I don't know. And no, the answer is no. Here's the breaking news. Just like that, the 2020 Pro Stock Motorcycle schedule also features a five-race countdown. Gainesville, Las Vegas, Houston, Atlanta, Richmond, Bristol, Norwalk, Denver, Sonoma, Seattle, so full Western Swing for the bikes. Indianapolis, Redding, Charlotte 2, St. Louis is there when the Pro Stock cars are not, but not in Dallas, Vegas, and Pomona. And there's your 2020 Pro Stock motorcycle schedule. And so they, too, will run a five-race countdown, which makes the Pro Stock five-race countdown a little more understandable and palatable, although I would still just add a race. 
And by adding one race to 19, it just makes the math work so much better. Because you can't miss the U.S. Nationals, and you want to run all six races, the countdown, and have a complete final countdown with everybody. That's my thought. Add a race. But I know, we we cut it down, it took a lot to cut it down to 18, and now we're going to grow it right back to 19 immediately, and my answer is yes, that's what I would do. I would go to the pro stock teams and I would say, hey, can we do this? I don't like the five race countdown. Everything else, fine with. Like the moving around, I like the fact that people that did without pro stock last year are going to get pro stock this year. I think it encourages fans to travel to different racetracks. If you love pro stock, that's fine. Travel to a different racetrack. Go to a different race. Explore. And I know there are people whose economic situation uh, does not allow them to do that. I get it. I get it. So then you don't. You watch on TV. Or get NHRA.TV. But generally as a framework, I like it. Except for the five race count. But hey, can't love everything. All right. More shows coming. Doug Coletta, Tommy Johnson, Ty Tharp, Matt Smith, Aaron Stampton. All coming up later on in the WFO Radio feed, and you will get them all. All you have to do is click subscribe. Click subscribe on WFORadio.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all of these different things. Great way. Wherever you get your podcasts, that's what they say to say. Big thanks to Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology, TotalSeal.com, MagicDryUS.com, Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School, FrankHawley.com. Rodax Coffee and Grills, guess it, dot com. Uh, Hanks for his metalworking lubricants, samtech.edu, hussyperformance.net. Thanks, guys, for putting the show on the air. We really appreciate it, and all you listeners out there. Uh, if you ever need any of these products, this is where to go. All right, more to come. WFO. WFO! The views and opinions of the hosts, guests, or callers do not necessarily reflect that of the station ownership, advertisers, or agencies. I love WFO Radio. Oh, yeah. The one thing that top drag racing teams agree on is HanksDefers.com. HanksDefers metalworking lubricants are going to make you more efficient in the machine shop. It's going to save your tools, it's going to improve your surface quality, and it's going to make you quicker and more efficient. Go to HanksDefers.com to find out more information. HanksDefers metalworking lubricants since 1937. We're talking gourmet coffee, we're talking hot sauces, we're talking spice rubs, we're talking everything good at RodaxCoffeeAndGrills.com. Marvin Rodak, been doing it since the 70s, figured out that life is better with great coffee, and oh, he's so right. 817-924-6821. Call Marvin, he'll roast up some coffee fresh for you. Throw in some hot sauce, some spice rub, and you will be loving it. Hit them up, Rodax, coffee and grills.com. Hussy Copper makes high performance copper head gaskets. Go to hussyperformance.net to find out the entire line of gaskets that they make. And if you don't see what you need, they will custom make gaskets for you. Hussy Performance has been in the business for over 40 years, and they know exactly where and how to purchase gaskets copper at the tightest possible tolerances go to hussyperformance.net to find out more information or call david allen himself he gives out his cell number 724-318-8292 for hussyperformance.net subscribe to wfo radio on itunes never miss a show and don't forget to write a review w f o this is wfo radio (laughs) 